Stick together now. Stick together. Right. Yeah, a bit of Al's arm. Yeah. Oh, he's really. Yes. Yeah, right. I was going to say, there's some history in here. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I love this. I love this. No, you're not gonna reach no eggs. Uh, ああ。親に捨てて行かれたのは私が拾って。以来姉妹のように育ってきました。私の一族、山賊は新国の中でも権力なんてないに等しい。だからですかね。Wow. She might attack it first. No. Demo. Kazoku does any crash dictate. No. Kuro is on his dictate. But as you told the Kakega in a scar, I need not done this. You're going to do something about it? Donna. He know the mother, mother, chicken girl. <laughs> Just hunting down. Oh, okay. Ah, no Wow. Yeah, that's some history. <笑>本当に俺一人で行っちゃうぞ。<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> オッケー。すまないな。何が俺をかばったばっかりに。別に、ガキの時の修行に比べりゃ大したことねえし。前向きだな。生きることにね、ちっこいだけだ。ちょっとでも諦めたら、アルの鉄筋と土豪が飛ん
真理の扉の出来損ないここは現実と真理の狭間といったところかな。Purgatory? Limbo? Kind of? みんなここで死を待つしかない。Wow. This is exciting. Really exciting. Who's gonna bring Al's body back? 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 大相当もということはイシュバール戦の貴様らがイシュバール<笑>あれほど愉快な仕事はなかったね<笑>このエンビーが子供を撃ち殺した超本人<笑> But of course in the shape of a blue eyed devil <笑>ヨキさんから聞きましたイシュバールのこと Doesn't want to talk about it 気持ちよかったねあれは弾丸一発でみるみる内乱が広がっていや本当に爽快だったよああちなみにねこのエンビーが化けたのはイシュバールへの軍事介入に反対していた恩恵派の証拠 Wow 本当に人間ってやつは操りやすい。Is she trying to get a reaction out of him? Or they? Are they trying to get a reaction out of him? Ed. イシュバール人を追いやって、スカーという復讐記を生み出して、ウィンディの両親を奪った元凶。なんだと？こいつビクトム。どうせここで全員死ぬんだ。ネドミアルにいいもの見せてやるよ。森の中で戦った時、奴の足元を見たか。いや。Yeah, me. Loud noise. Really loud. Like it shook the ground. 場じゃない体重ってことだ。あいつ本体はかなり。Jeez. Oh, again, I feel so bad for Gluttony. Ode, Oto Sama, you call a little. Oto Sama, God, and Iryo, Homan Crusoe, Scutahito. おおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおお
Okay. Breaking up the squad. ほっぽしれぶ手人が決まったそうです。いざ報告は注意よ。妙実より。中央司令部。ああ。こういうわけだ。ほう。この地の海だ。絶妙に不足はないね。わあ。ほほ。趣味悪いなお前。きついのぶ
a massive scale, right? It's a substantial scale. Uh, and of course, it's quite sinister. Surely it's a sinister plan, right? Um, because, you know, the, the actual specifics of it are still kind of under wraps, right? It's still kind of a bit of mystery there, right? But, you know, from the things they've exposited and the things they've mentioned, it's going to be on an immense scale, right? Uh, again, kind of hinted at not too long ago through that conversation uh, that Dr. Marco had um, with Envy, right? <laughs> Ooh, who I see in a different form. Like, I'm not sure if that's a true form of Envy, but maybe it is. Maybe that is a true form and, uh, you know, they or he... I am a little bit confused at this moment because the enemy itself is calling um, Envy he, him, uh, his, uh, but... A lot of you have told me that it's a genderless uh, being. So I don't know. But I certainly see that form of it, of him. Um, yeah, uh, green with envy. Uh, I mean, that form is something out of like Dante's Inferno, right? It's grotesque. It's monstrous. I mean, envy is really quite monstrous, right? Even before transforming into that uh, form. <laughs> Ooh, I mean, you know, just laying it all out there, right? Uh, because Envy also believes that, you know, there's no escape here. Listen, of course, there's going to be uh, some opening. There is going to be some escape, an escape route, something. But it has to be something substantial, of course. I mean, of course, the characters are going to make it out of there, right? They need to make it out of there for story progression. Uh, but that's a fascinating part, right? How exactly do they get out of there, right? Because it's been established this is uh, eternity, right? It even kind of reminded me of a recent Chainsaw Man episode. Right, the Eternity Devil mini arc. And I don't want to go into potential spoilers, but it's going to require something similar, perhaps something batshit crazy to make it out of here. Um, and I'm really quite excited about that as well. But you know, that whole segment, them being stuck in there, uh, inside gluttony stomach, though it's not really gluttony stomach, it's kind of it's kind of here and there. Um, you know, according to Envy, it's kind of the, the place between the truth and reality, right? Uh, the failed attempt. So yeah, you know, indeed it did have connections to the door, the door to the truth, the portal. But it's interesting, isn't it, that this all-powerful father of the sins was not able to accomplish this, was not able to create uh, his own door to the truth, right? Uh, botched or uh, maybe it's not even possible. You know, maybe I should take that back. Yeah, maybe it wasn't botched. Maybe it's just not possible. Um, and... It doesn't, it doesn't look like the father's given up on it though, right? It looks like he, he might have learned from his mistakes, his failed attempt, and now they're going after these unique individuals, uh, people with specific skill sets, people that have faced the truth, that have opened the door, right? Um, so essentially they know how to do it, they know how to get there, but they're not able to do it. They need these people who've done it, right? Um, these people that are good candidates, uh, uh, an important candidate, important sacrifice. But that's the question, right? What's the big motive behind all of this for father, right? And then you have to start thinking about the things these people in the inner circle have been offered, right? Uh, to be going along with all of these plans, right? Of the homunculi. You know, essentially it feels like father's attempt or his failed attempt was from a manufactured subjective reality, right? Kind of goes back to that notion of it being somewhere between uh, reality and the truth. But yeah, in terms of potentially getting out of there, you know, Ed is someone who has faced the actual truth, right? who has crossed the door, who has opened the door, sorry. Uh, so is that going to come into play? Could that come into play? Could that do something, his presence in this place? But, you know, earlier I kind of touched up on Envy really being this monstrous figure, right? Really just letting loose because again, it, you know, he thinks this is the end, you know, it's going to die in here. He's going to die in here as well. So just let's loose, uh, just reveling in his role, his prominent role in all of this. I mean, if you think about it, and as Ed kind of pointed out, as he lists the different things um, that are set into motion because of his actions on that day, you know, imitating an officer to shoot that child, but not just any officer, an officer that was against all of this anyways, right? And was not able to defend himself. And then of course, because of that one action, setting into motion uh, crazy amounts of things, essentially, you know, kind of changing the trajectory of so many of these characters, 
right? People Ed really cares for. And he also mentioned you ruined our home, right? Um, I suppose he might be kind of uh, alluding to that plague, right? I, ultimately, it did kind of come about because of the war, right? That was once again sparked by this action. Um, or maybe, maybe it was because in proximity, it might be close to Ishwal. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure in terms of the map. Uh, though the one thing I do know is that Bradley, King Bradley, did not send any of uh, Mustang's crew to the east. Because I remember Mustang being from Eastern Command, uh, right? So yeah, I, I suppose their hometown is also from the east then. But yeah, you know, more on that later. Mustang and King Bradley, geez, I mean, he did a number. He did a number on Mustang. You don't, you don't see Mustang like that, right? The moment he found out about Hawkeye's new... Um, job essentially her new placement yeah that face oof, yeah you know it's a setback um it was quite a devastating blow to uh, roy mustang and his plans but also even though characters like mustang and ed might be in a bit of a tricky situation at the moment they are getting really crucial information still right yes mustang is certainly down and out for the moment of course he's going to mount an another challenge at some point he's going to push again for sure right but for now, yeah, he's going to have to regroup, think about it, um, and yeah, let's see. But even though it's a major setback, he has learned a lot of crucial information, right? Now he knows all about, um, you know, the homunculi being in control since the inception of the country, right? That, that they've always been in control, that these higher-ups have always been in the service of the homunculi and father, right? They don't know about father, but, you know, us, the audience knows. And I feel like for us, there's also some crucial insight uh, in terms of the relationship Bradley or King Bradley might have with uh, his son, Selim, right? Who he maintains is not a way to get to him ever. You know, if you go back to the first appearance of Selim, you know, they made it really clear, right? They, they're really hinting at um, there being plans for Selim because Selim was all about helping his father, right? Uh, and King Bradley was all like, yeah, maybe one day, maybe you could help me, right? So it's kind of tough to miss that setup. And then of course, you know, there's Maze Hughes and the funeral and and um, Alicia, right? Um, context is key, Oof, context is key. You know, those shaking hands, he, the man was ready to blow, right? He could not stand the young girl, the young child. I mean, he simply could not stand the reactions of that young child, right? This, you know, uh, just last episode, I was I was going on and on about the humanity of King Bradley, right? Um, that duality of King Bradley. But here, in this episode, he's ruthless. He's ice cold and his nature in terms of children. It's pretty clear, isn't it? So I don't know, man. <laughs> you know, th that's the thing. It's, it's like a back and forth, isn't it? You know, because I've got to say, I'm really, really quite enjoying the homunculi. As characters, I'm really enjoying them. It's essentially a back and forth at this point because you'll see the humanity uh, of the sins, uh, but also you'll see the inhumane side of the sins as well. Um, so I think I think they're really quite intriguing, these characters. Um, and I, I feel like these sins are essentially victims as well. They are, right? Um, but I, you know, I've got to say, I really enjoyed them as well. You know, I've been saying, I've been loving the ensemble cast. And that includes the homunculi. It does. And I love how they're getting a lot of focus over the span of these last few episodes as well. Right? I'm all for it. You know, listen. Gluttony. <laughs> I have a soft spot for gluttony. Especially even more so after this episode. You know, you really see that childlike mentality. Right? Um, that he's really quite lost. And that exchange with Al. I mean, there was something so wholesome about it. Something so innocent about it. Right? Um... And yeah, you know, I felt bad, again, for Gluttony. And I feel like Al actually might even have some sympathy for Gluttony, right? As they kind of um, travel together to Central. I mean, they, they're close by now. I mean, listen, Gluttony certainly has the capacity to be monstrous, right? Grotesque and dangerous, really quite dangerous. But still, but still, I have sympathy for Gluttony, right? I'm sure many of you did as well. Um, I mean, he's so goddamn cute at points. Or it's so goddamn cute at points, right? <laughs> Al just tickled. I mean, I mean, Gluttony probably thought Al's tickling it, but you know, Al's kind of just 
quite baffled about the whole, you know, sucking them in element to this. And, you know, he kind of touches gluttony and gluttony kind of starts blushing. I just found that so funny and wholesome. But the homunculi, you know, they certainly exhibit human traits. Um, I mean, the sins are of uh, human nature, essentially, right? Um, and yeah, you know, you, you see a lot of that uh, over the loss of lust, right? Uh, there was a lot of anger there and a lot of sadness there. But yeah, I think they're really quite intriguing, man. You think about characters like greed, right? Uh, King Bradley, uh, lust and envy. I, I like envy. I do. And I think the voice acting really plays a big part as well. For sure. For sure. Um, giving them those unique personalities as well. You know, I still miss greed. I really do. But kind of going back a bit, you know, I spoke of how Characters like Ed and Mustang are still getting really crucial information, even if they are in tricky positions. Now, if you shift to Ed, he knows all about the kickoff, the main reason it all kicked off, right? Um, imagine Ed running into Scar in the near future, right? Because I do think he'll get out of here. Uh, of course, he can't be stuck in here forever, but imagine he, he shares this information, right? And how Scar reacts to this information. I think it really could be a turning point as well. Um, but, you know, let's kind of shift the focus to King Bradley and his devastating strike against Mustang and his crusade and his crew. But the most important piece um, is right under his nose, right? And that's how he's going to keep Mustang under his thumb, right? Or so he believes. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see how Mustang approaches this, how he proceeds from this point on, right? Uh, it promises to be exciting for sure. Right? It's a setback. It's a major blow. It's a, it's, it's a devastating blow, actually. Um, but because of that, it's going to make it even more interesting and exciting now. Right? Uh, let's see if Hawkeye does anything. Right? Um, if she could actually end up using this position uh, to their benefit somehow. Let's see. Let's see. But as expected, Ed and Ling together... Fantastic duo. Having them inside together made for a lot of really fun moments, a lot of interesting moments. Uh, there's certainly a lot of bonding there as well. I think, you know, Ling is certainly going to have some newfound respect for Ed. He, he probably already does. You know, you see it through some of his reactions. He gets to see Ed's uh, never say die attitude in motion, at play, right? He gets to see the whole no man gets left behind um, belief as well. You know, of course, a lot of fantastic fun moments, uh, comedic moments as well. You know, both of them kind of checking each other if they're the real deal. Though, of course, Link can kind of sense it anyways, right? He knows. He knows about the unique chi, the strange chi that the homunculi give off. Yet he, he still asked Ed. And of course, Link's condition, his potential condition is still at play, right? Um, him kind of passing out. Though he didn't completely pass out this time. I've seen it before on the outside. But yeah, here he, he was struggling. He was really struggling, right? Again, you know, it feels like low blood sugar. Uh, and maybe that explains the need to be eating all the time as well. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, but speaking of characters from Zheng, how about Mei Cheng and a bit of that backstory? Oh my goodness. Imagine having that type of pressure on your young shoulders. The last hope of her lowest rank clan in all of Zheng. I mean, that is tragic. That is just so sad to see this young child in that position. I mean, she's quite a capable young child. Let's not uh, beat around the bush. Of course, she can handle herself out there. And yes, yeah, she is formidable. But of course, a lovely backstory for uh, Xiaomei and Mei Cheng and how they kind of ended up connecting through this shared struggle. And, and then of course, as I was hoping for and expecting, you know, that connection that Scar is also able to kind of have with this uh, child right? And have this shared humanity, right? Through their struggles. But yeah, I think that's about it for this one, folks. It's all set up nicely for quite an interesting episode, potentially, right? So yeah, I'm excited about that. So if you enjoyed this, consider dropping a like, consider dropping some comments, give me your thoughts. If you're interested in uh, full length or early access to the next two episodes right now, consider checking out the Patreon page. Uh, the links are in the description and the pinned comment. Also links for social media, if that's your thing. Right then, thank you so much for joining me and thank you for your time because time is precious. It really is. And I do hope to see you again soon for the next one. Until then, take it easy.